All right, guys. Chem 110B, Chapter 11, Equilibrium. This is exercise F, states of matter and the equilibrium constant expression. It's really important that you remember that for exercise B or exercise C, the stuff that we've done already, everything was simplified for you in that mostly everything was either in the gas state or the aqueous state. But again, you know, we're always going to give you more challenge later in a lesson. And here's the other thing you have to remember. Only the reactants or products that can actually change their concentration are included in the K expression. Only those that can change their concentration whenever the reactants become products and then the products go back to the reactants and we calculate K we need the concentrations. If a certain part doesn't change its concentration, it's not part of K. So what are the four different states of matter? Solid, liquid, aqueous, and gas. So let's think about it. If you have a solid, you can't make that solid of a higher concentration. If it's a solid, you can't squeeze it together more. If it's a chunk of steel, you can't make it more steely. If you have a nail, you can't make it extra naily by shoving more iron in it. If you chop the nail in half, you also have half the number of iron atoms. So you can't change the concentration of a solid. You can't change the concentration of a pure liquid. If you're really, really thirsty and you fill up a glass of water, you can't squeeze the water down and then add more water to make it extra thick, extra watery water. That's crazy, right? So a pure liquid like water, H2O liquid, can't change its concentration, so it's not part of the K expression. But certainly an aqueous solution can become a different concentration. All you have to do is add a little bit of sugar to something or a whole bunch of sugar to something and you know the concentration of sugar can change. You can make a salt solution very, very dilute, or you can add more salt, dissolve more salt to make it extra salty. So aqueous solutions can change their concentration. Same with gases. A room might not start off very humid, like a shower, but after you come out of the shower, the room is extremely humid. You've changed the concentration of H2O gas in that room. So, gases can change their concentration. Okay, so how does that impact how we do problems? Well, let's see a couple. Here's a couple of examples. Here are three reactions with the states of matter added in. Your job is to look at those. Remember these rules at the top, and I'm actually going to cover up the rules right now. See if you can do it without the rules. Okay. So, hit pause. Try to write the right K expression. Then come on back. We'll see how you did. Hit pause. Alright, you're back. So, what do you think? Well, it's always products over reactants, right? It's always products over reactants. But this product is a solid. So what do we do if the product is a solid? We call it 1. Okay? So K is going to be equal to 1 divided by the sulfur ion concentration taken to the third power times the aluminum ion concentration taken to the second power. And that's the value of K. If you were to solve for K given concentrations, we'd give you a concentration here, we'd give you a concentration here, there would be no concentration to give you for this solid. And so that's all that you can use to find K. Okay? Okay. Alright, let's try this one products over reactants. I see a whole bunch of people write this problem like this. Okay, we got CA, we got AG squared over here, and then we got CA, 
in that AG squared. And they feel real good about themselves. And that can't be right. Look, it's exactly the same on both sides. This is a ring. This is silver cleaner. They're very different. Solid calcium is very different from calcium ions. So this can't be right. Only use the ions. Products taken to the powder coefficients divided by reactants taking the power of those coefficients. And that's the value of K. If you look back at our earlier video when we were first doing this, this was one of the reactions. And I started off with liquid, and then I went back and I changed it to gas. Because the actual answer for this problem with liquid goes like this. There's only the CO2 taken to the third the C3H8 taken to the 1 and the O2 to the 5th. Okay? If it's in the liquid form, you can't change the concentration and it's not part of K. But if we increase the temperature within this reaction high enough so the H2O turned into a gas, then the H2O gas would be included to the fourth power because it's the gaseous state. Got it? It's really important that you understand the difference between the two because it'll make a very big difference in the value of K. All right, get in there, practice, keep that in mind as you do all these problems. Good luck.